proposal for the parking meters. Okay, um, at the last council meeting, we presented a recommendation to city council, just some information for them to digest of some changes that could happen in parking. This was really in response to a, one of our hospitality districts asking for some changes. So we just took a look at um, what our parking rules are citywide and looked at some opportunities to maybe bring consistency across the city. Um, so, so that was what the conversation was last week. And so that would be making the meters nine to nine? That's one of the options and we're really looking to pilot that right now in the Five Points District. As, as everyone in Columbia knows and a lot of our visitors, that's a district that has a lot of activity day and night time and um, managing the parking at night may be beneficial to the district. So they asked us to look at that proposal. What were businesses saying in Five Points? Because to my understanding it came from the Five Points Association. Were businesses saying that they were having problems with parking, having customers be able to come in and out because of that free parking? So a lot of times, I mean, this has been a conversation for years um, in different districts is how to better manage the supply demand of parking. So um, it's not unusual for a business or a hospitality district to reach out and just ask us to consider changes. Um, for instance, several years ago, we implemented Saturday enforcement in Five Points to help control the supply demand. And, and the reason for that is we want to make sure that patrons have a place to park when they try to go into the businesses. And if you're not enforcing, sometimes um, people who are not patronizing the businesses are taking up the spaces. So we're looking to control that. So they really reached out. This is part of a bigger plan, not just parking. We've got a commercial corridor plan that you've probably seen we've rolled out and we've been talking with our council over the last few months about. This is one component of a commercial corridor plan that really will start in five points, looking at five points and how to incentivize development, how to attract new development, and really revive the five points area. Parking is just simply one component of that. So likely the, the whole commercial corridor plan, there will, um, we will be rolling out different components of that starting January 1st. We're already talking about all of the components of that plan, but we as staff are preparing for some implementations um, early January. Not sure yet about when the parking changes would take place. Um, so, so that's yet to be determined and that's conversations we need not only with our council, but with the Five Points District. So would it just basically be everybody would agree on that? Well, and unfortunately, you can't ever get a situation where everybody agrees. So we will try to do the best we can with managing the supply demand and making it um, beneficial to the community as a whole. Our council will certainly have more conversations. I don't, they don't necessarily have to take the vote on it. They do have to support it. Staff implements the directives we're given by our council. So certainly they set the policy and we implement. It I know is, that it was in a work session last week and it was agreed upon, but it wasn't voted on like you said. Right. So will it ever be voted on or like you said, will it just be a conversation? That's not there will be additional meetings before anything's implemented, additional conversations. There is not currently the requirement for it to be voted on. Council can certainly decide they want to vote on it. So, so I don't have an exact answer to that. It will not happen until there's other public meetings going on though with our council. And it's just, if, if it, There's potential. That is not something we're looking to do immediately. It would be a pilot in five points. I don't have a time frame of how long that pilot would last. But certainly we're looking, with, with any service we provide or any activity we provide, we want to know what the community needs as a whole. It's easier for our customers and um, the parking community if there's consistency across the city. We do get some complaints sometimes from people who get tickets on Saturday in five points that they didn't realize they needed to feed the meter. So consistency is important, but also listening to our community is important. And we have a lot of different needs across the city, so we're going to listen to those needs. Did you research other communities and other cities when you were looking at this plan, like Nashville or other Charleston or other cities that are kind of like Columbia or maybe even a little bigger than Columbia to kind of see if this is working? Absolutely. We network, again, not only parking related, with any service we provide. We look at our 
um, comparable communities. We have good relationships across South Carolina and across the country with other entities similar in nature, and even some not so similar, even the private industry. We like to know what they're doing. That doesn't mean we're gonna do it, but we still need to be aware of it. So um, certainly it's not unique across the country to have extended hours enforcement. Again, I, I do wanna stress this is not driven by revenues. I think that's some of the fear is this is a revenue driven concept and it's not. It is a supply demand. If, if the meters or, or the spaces are taken up by people who are not patronizing the businesses, that's not good for the businesses. We want to make sure they're available. The, the meters are short-term parking. Our garages are more long-term parking. We want to make sure people who want to go patronize the restaurants, the retail, all, all of the activities going on have a place to park so it's easy for them to get to those locations. Speaking of revenue, if there is extra income that does come with the nine to nine, where does that money go to? Where does the meter money go to? It stays in the parking fund, so we do have a parking fund, and it's reinvested in the parking system. So, for instance, our meters are fairly old. We'd love to see a replacement from those meters to pay stations on blocks, maybe credit card meters, um, just innovative technology that makes it easier for the customer, but also more efficient to manage. So we would reinvest. Um, our garages are another example. You'll see we've been implementing some new um, hardware and software throughout four of our garages within the last year. That is parking funds that get reinvested in our system to help us maintain it. So it's just a cycle? It is, absolutely. Mm -hmm. How are you going to notify citizens once this goes into place? In five points, will there be some set sort of signage so that people know that it's going to be a paid time period now? Or Absolutely. We, there are stickers on all of our meters, and, and when we do get complaints that people didn't know they needed to pay, the meters actually do say that already, is for Saturdays and five points you have to pay. We would certainly replace all the meters with whatever the updated hours are. We would post information on our website, use social media, work with the Five Points Association to push information. We actually want people to know when you have to pay and when you don't have to pay. No, because we, we did a story, I guess it was about a couple weeks ago, two mm -hmm. weeks, three weeks ago, with the initiatives that they're trying to implement mm -hmm. in Five Points. How is this helping in that effort? So, so are you referring to the entire commercial corridor plan or parking in general? The whole, the the whole, whole so parking is a situation that a, a lot of the challenges in Five Points is nighttime parking. It is people who are coming after your typical business hours that have a hard time finding a place to park. So managing that parking to prevent students who may not be patronizing the businesses from just leaving their cars there overnight because they don't have anywhere else to park if they have friends coming to town and you know they're, they're where they live doesn't have enough parking. We want to make sure they're not taking up a meter that a business needs for their patron. Also employees of businesses. Street meters are not intended to be the employee parking for businesses. We need to get them a little farther off of the street so that the patrons have a place to park. So this would help manage that as well. You don't have much land around there, so what, what's the real solution? So uh, fortunately, the city just bought the building at 2221 Divine. We have 315 spaces that we are looking to enhance the connectivity between that, that lot. It's actually a two-level deck um, to make sure that people know that is also a parking option for Five Points. And we're excited about that opportunity, excited about what that means to bring more parking to Five Points. We also have three surface lots. We um, have a Divine Street surface lot, a Pavilion Street surface lot, and on Harden Street, the old Exxon station, is public parking. We're looking to better promote those, better utilize those day and night time. If, if people get up in arms and say, this is ridiculous, crazy, um, we don't want this. Listen to those voices we well. absolutely listen to all input we receive and we digest that information our council sets the policy so we certainly share that with them and yes I believe we as a city are very responsive to our citizens and our customers and they say it's revenue generated one more time when we get in like one person we talked to said you're either taxing us on the property you're taxing us, taxing us on a lot of things so this is just adding to some frustration We've, we've heard that concern. Again, I want to stress, this was in response to a request the city received. This was not driven by staff. This was us responding to a request from the Five Points stakeholders who 
again, it's not parking in isolation. This is an entire commercial corridor plan of how to revitalize Five Points. We're excited to be part of that. This is not city staff um, driven. This is a community driven initiative. We certainly will listen and respond. Um, it is hard sometimes to balance the needs of all stakeholders, but, but we do try to do that. And, and just piggybacking on her question about where does the money go one more time, because it's not going back to the stakeholders of Five Points. Is it? Well, we have revenues and expenses from Five Points. So, you know, enforcing meters in general takes money. Improving the connectivity between the property we bought at 2221 Divine and Five Points. We need better street lighting. We need more cameras. We, we need a lot of other assets to make that facility feel comfortable to park in. So yes, it will be reinvested in Five Points as revenues across the city are reinvested in all areas of the city. Any worry that this will deter people from, or to come and say, oh, I don't want to pay till nine. I don't, I'm not going to go to that restaurant. I'm going to go somewhere in North right. Columbia, a different area. So that's certainly a concern we have heard expressed. Um, we do not believe our parking rates would deter anyone from coming downtown. We're certainly sensitive to that though, and we will, fil we will filter that into our conversation and try to make sure that that's not a barrier to people coming downtown, because we certainly want as many people as we can get to come downtown to Vista, Main Street, Five Points, Divine Street, Rosewood, North Main. We want our city to be lively, and we're excited about what's happening, and, we are not trying to be a deterrent to that. Just to clarify once more, who has jurisdiction on the final say about the timelines and when this is passed? Is it the council or you know, the service? So, the so staff implements policy council okay. sets. There is nothing today in our code that would require a council action. It is likely our city manager will make a decision that we would want to vote on it um, before we actually set forth on the pilot program. But council did give they were receptive to trying a pilot in five points. Pilots are just that. They can be retracted if, the, if it's not going well and you know there's a lot of um, anxiety or a lot of negative um, results from a pilot. But, but if you don't do one, to start, you, know, you never know. So in other cities across the country, I don't know if y'all have researched that, but, but we're behind the scale as far as how other cities are trying to manage parking well into the evening. It's a good problem to have. We have people downtown at night. We just need to manage making sure the spaces are available for the businesses. Now in Chicago, I moved from Chicago not long ago. One thing they did was they actually sold the parking meters and that whole, I don't know if you know that story. I, absolutely. I think everybody in parking across the country knows that right. story. And that's like a 75 year deal or something crazy like that. Um, do you see anything in the future as far as uh, Columbia ever doing something to that extent to say we're going to contract this out. I, I don't That's see right. us, the model that was used in Chicago, no, I don't see the city looking at that kind of model. We certainly, every day, not only in parking with every service we provide, look for efficiencies. And if it's more efficient to have certain activities performed by contractors, then we certainly are open to that. We. We need to look at that hard and close and make sure that we're doing what's right, not only for short term, but for long term. Um, no, I don't see us ever selling our parking system. Not yet. <laughs> I, I, I don't see that day coming. We, we start, you may see us outsourcing some of the activities, but not selling the system. Okay. And, and that's not even on the radar right, right now.